I usually don't like Rise and Fall channels, either because the creator in question still makes decent views, or the creator just comes back and makes that video relevant. I'm alive. I'm talking about Super Plant Dolan, an animation channel that long hiatus only for it to return in late 2022. Will they be haunted by past mistakes and former hosts that disappeared? But what caused the hiatus? And can they move forward to the brighter future for the channel? I spoke with the creator, Danger Dolan, to find out. Hello, I'm Daft Pina, and this is... Super Planet Dolan, the Shima Conspiracy. However, we must first talk about the channel itself before we talk about the channel coming back itself. Before I get into that, I must tell you about today's sponsor. When you're finished working on the drawing, it's always nice to take a break and go out. So why not smell good while doing so? Scentbird is uplifting my channel by sponsoring these fascinately moving pixels you're watching right now. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription with the ability to choose from designer fragrances every month delivered straight to your door in a sleek case. Wow. And it's only 17 USD per month with 30 days supply. Double wow. The ones I have today that I shall be sending off are Michelle Germain, Paris Sexual Steel, Tommy Bahama, Maritime Voyage, and Armand Jane, London, or my man. Each sense has a unique sense that pairs well with the right occasions. I can see sexual steel for lovely nights out, maritime for adventures at the high seas, and Oman man just for hanging out with the lads at the pub. Personally, I like the last one. It's quite nice. Scentbird also carries brands like Prada, Gucci, Versace, as well as indie brands like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions by Rebel. Triple wow. With all these choices, it's quite hard to decide which you should get first. So use my coupon code DAFINA to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird.com. It's just low over 7 USD for your first month. So check the link in the description or use the coupon code seen above, with the service being available in the US and Canada. So go out there and enjoy life while smelling like you're ready to take on anything. Perhaps even drawing something inspired by your nights out. Have fun! Planet Dolan Planet Dolan is a moniker for a slew of channels starting with the DD Guides back in November 19, 2012, created by Tom Dolan. Despite what Google says, his name was never Daniel, as someone just made that up. Being 23 at the time, Daniel originally did World of Warcraft boss guides amongst a bunch of other things. These would include machinimas, let's plays, and even gaming countdowns. At the time, he saw other people making these and wanted to join the fun. March 14, Tom changed his channel name to Danger Dolan and kept making top 10 videos of video game topics. Though he kept changing the name between DD Gaming, DD Guides, and Danger Dolan Gaming. Plan Dolan would be created February 28, 2014, and was a general mix of top 10s as well as Reddit story readings, with the former being slowly phased out of the channel's library. I mean, they're still there. I mean, like, they, they stopped making those ones. Right, they stopped making those. However, for this channel, Dolan wasn't alone, as other narrators would join in to read other people's stories. But on very rare occasions, the narrators would tell their own stories. So for me, this kind of seems a bit much for one channel to handle. It would even have animated music videos that people liked as well. These same narrators just mentioned before would transfer over to the new channel, Super Plan Dolan, which revolves around life's most burning questions. Created less than one year after Plan Dolan, this channel would have more fanfare due to the interactions of the narrators and focus on animation. The Reddit stories weren't animated, they were like slideshows, and they're just moving JPEGs across the screen. But for Super's animation, Dolan, not Dragon Ball Z. Tom would play the character of Dolan, who would answer questions in a comedically wrong manner, while the other host would answer truthfully, giving the viewer something to chew on. The last time we heard from them, they claimed there are at least 26 stars in the universe, possibly 27. A galaxy is a huge collection of stars that all spin around a center point, like a spinning top. Some of the earlier narrators would be Shima, Hellbent, Melissa, Doopy Do Over, as well as Critical. This was before he revealed his face, so this is kind of all we had to go off of, I guess. Interesting enough, just like Zach James at Yo Mama, Tom doesn't really draw. I just love writing. I love everything to do with it. Um, I also love producing stuff, uh, so it's quite fun to, to write a script and then treat it like a blueprint and kind of assemble all the pieces together and uh, into a complete product. It's, it's, I love it. Um, and I love the format of animation as well. It's, uh, you can just do anything with it. Hiring people to draw and work on the characters, I did ask about the artists, as some of them were not safe for work. I mean, like, look at these old thumbnails. Oh, woo, ah. And so I asked if this was intentional or a coincidence. Yeah, I'd say it's a coincidence. I, I, I didn't really have any, like, I didn't look too hard into like every single thing they've ever produced. And a lot of the time they would have like a completely separate account for that. I would have no idea about. But even if they even if they did, I'm like, well, you know, it's not a big deal. Like, I mean, we're doing 
say for a kind of PG-ish stuff on on Planet Do- on Super Planet Dolan, I, I I just didn't really hold anyone back from applying for the position just because of that. You know what I mean? The channel had been so successful, some of the team actually attended VidCon Australia, selling merch and talking to fans in person. So going back to the characters themselves, while he contracts people to design them, he owns the full rights. Apart from select Reddit readings where other YouTubers would come in and they kind of just like designed an avatar for them, Tom doesn't own those rights as the YouTubers rights. So he doesn't own those. While he does own the full rights, he won't want to replace the voice actors that they leave, as that would be disrespectful to real life people, and the fans definitely would not have liked that. However, this situation reminds me a bit of wrestler King Kong Bundy, which is a bit of an out of context thing to bring up, but don't worry. It's going somewhere. You see, in the 80s, King Kong Bundy was the spokesperson for a computer company called Vendex. However, the character's persona and outfits were owned by the WWF. The CEO, Vince McMahon, was furious upon hearing this because King Kong Bundy, or real name Christopher, was using his character to promote things without permission. At the time, Christopher thought it was like a one-time thing for a small company, but nope, full page ads. LGR made a good video about it. So I'd asked Dolan about this citing a specific scenario. Dolan had this to say. As long as I have a message somewhere that just says like, you know, my, my, uh, whatever I say and like my actions and stuff don't reflect on my employer like uh, that, that that pretty much covers it let's see we had I think one or two people who left Planet Doll and that wanted their character back and I was like oh yeah like no, no biggie you can have him back uh, otherwise no I think we haven't really had any issues as you're watching this video you might have recognized the Dolan character I mean besides the channel itself obviously but I mean the character behind the character if you have a keen eye you'd have already known it's based on the Nolan Eric comic series called Dolan Duck a homicidal version of Don Dunk with weird adjacent characters. Daisy Doyle's character Gooby is a loose interpretation of it, so it plans to make Daisy another staple character. However, the plans never fully realized and later got turned into the reboot character, Darling. But we are getting ahead of ourselves, so please just slow down for a second, okay? Thanks. The animation itself is done mainly without reusing assets, meaning each frame is drawn essentially with a new, the drawing, a stark contrast to Yo Mama, which uses rigs. Reaching over main subscribers and the height of popularity, merchandise was released. Besides the standard shirts and mugs, a fact book was sold with words from videos put into the book form. Interesting enough, while facts themselves cannot be copyrighted, the wording is, so Dolan and the publishers have to double double check everything before release. But if you're a fan of Dolan at the time like I was, and didn't receive the book or really like hear about it, I guess. That's because the publishers only thought to release it in Australia, which is silly considering the channel's main audience is in America. Later, a mobile game would be released after a company approached them, and they went with an endless runner of go karts as Dolan likes Mario Kart. The team wasn't that large, it just two people working on it, noting that Dolan himself tested it for hours, but it's the standard free to play affair, meaning you can buy stuff with actual money from parents' wallet to buy the in game currency, Shinies. However, after a few updates, the product would end, which might have been for the best, as while they did fix some errors, if it continued, the bugs that couldn't be mended would pile up and take more time and money to correct. A few updates were released from the game, such as a new story mode and character outfits to the narrators. While on that topic, one of the early narrators that can still be seen in non-vocal roles is that of Shima, Nguyen. She was a voice actor on the internet that got a job playing a pink cat character after submitting a channel logo to Dolan's redesign contest. She was also the one who did the original Plan Dolan logo as seen on screen right now. Wow. She later became a narrator at the start of the channel, being a founding member that many people remember. Originally, the character of Shima was to be a robot, but it was suggested early on that she should be a cat instead. She actively participated in Dolan's Skype calls, working on scripts, and other production work. However, around late 2016, Shima disappeared from the internet, and Shima's last video released September 25th, 2016 on the the channel with the title, Do Penguins Have Knees? While this wasn't the first time she had done so, the first involving family issues, unbeknownst to Dolan in 2016, this would be the last year he would ever talk with her. At the time, as part of the group asking where she went, with a team which is as clueless as the public. It wasn't anything about the attention or the fan art, as Dolan stated she loved seeing them both safe for work and not safe for work, and it wasn't until December 23rd, 2020, did something related to Shima occur for changing her channel's profile picture. Skip forward exactly two years later, Dolan made a proper video addressing Shima's appearance, relaying about an unscripted now deleted apology video, a letter sent to him, and her Steam username popping up once in a while to show that she's okay. It was clear to him and many others that she wouldn't be coming back anytime soon, if at all. While Super Planet Dolan thrived with her, many people consider her tenure the best, though she was only active for about eight months. I did talk to someone who dated Shima at the time, however much in the case of Dolan and his team, they were never given a direct reason on why she left. I titled this video the Shima Conspiracy, despite talking about way more than that, because there's so many videos about it that range from theories or just asking, well, where is she? Fans just really want to know what happened. Though I feel if she were to come back and answer it, people really wouldn't be satisfied with the answer. In the meantime, people just made weird ARGs about what she went through, and the truth is, she left.
that, that, that's really it. Superplan Dolan is a lot more than just an internet conspiracy. They have other narrators and artists who do good works too that should be appreciated, which is why I want to focus on other aspects of the channels as well. Despite the massive success of the channel around 2018, Dolan had his eyes set on a larger, more difficult prize, that being his own animated series. Around 2018, Tom wanted to make something big, which would pivot his focus away from his channels. As a refresher, that would just be Plan Dolan and Super Plan Dolan. January 28th, 2018 would be the last time he posted on his original channel, Danger Dolan. But for the pilots, Tom had an idea about a series revolving around VR, later to be called Estruna. I'm not gonna give too much details about it, cause there's like so much info that could be a completely different video. But with his time and energy focused on that, the Dolan channels were less hands-on. Talking with Tom, he noted the passion wasn't there as it used to be, due in part to being a Way for so long. A video was made on the channel October 25th, 2019, talking about this with the literal title, Making Cartoon 2019. Tom was at a VidCon Australia panel featuring the likes of other contemporary storytime animators, the audience asking what their goals are. Tom noted he wanted to make a cartoon, and after the show, The Odd Ones Out recommended Kickstarter. Tom noted to The Odd Ones Out that rather than a Kickstarter, he wanted to see what he can do on his own. Tom tested the waters for producing animation aside from standard videos, such as the short visual novel, as well as animated music videos. Stepping away from the production, in early 2020, the Destruna studio was founded with 3D artists from around the world. Working on this animation, they pitched it to many networks including Crunchyroll, and the company at the time was asking for pitches for non-anime shows and had some strict guidelines they wanted to follow for said productions. No kids or teen shows at all. You see, the company had previously promoted High Guardian Spice back in 2018 to less than optimistic fanfare. Everyone hated it. So having been burned by the series, they were strict about what they think their fans wanted. So if you want the real story, I made a video talking about it, speaking to some of the people behind the show. But a big thing Tom noticed when pitching was the producers weren't really happy, as a lot of them were jaded by the animation process. Either in creating or selling your idea that you want the world to see, you must understand it's never going to be yours after the handshake. Producers and companies can say what they want to you, and just dump in your face until you sign the contract. Case in point for Shine Takuchi, who is the creator of Inside Job, who had a full season, part 1 and 2, released on Netflix. And despite much fanfare, as well as renewing the series for a second season, Netflix just cancelled it. For some reason. In a post by the creator, January 8th, 2023, she is saddened that the stories of Reagan and Brett, the main characters, will never fully be told. So it seems even if you have your foot in the door, the studio is more likely to amputate it rather than let you through. And while this example happened after the pitches, Tom nevertheless had a greater appreciation for online animation. While you do have to fight the YouTube algorithm and keep up with consistency, you do have the opportunity to make whatever you'd like and still own the rights. So I was like, oh my God, this is this is really opened my eyes about like what an opportunity we all have these days. So yeah, it is it is 100% energized me to, to appreciate YouTube so much more, despite all the apocalypse or like whether or not you're getting views or whatever it is, just the fact that you can make stuff um, and and anything you want, like no, no oversight, you just, whatever you feel like making it, oh, yeah. While he was working on the show, his channels got less and less attention. May 13th, 2020 was the last video on Super Plan Dolan, and as for regular Plan Dolan, May 9th, 2021 was the last video on that channel. This is because the latter was more cost effective and they just had moving PNGs across the screen. But since he has other narrators and animators he has to rely on, due to him investing heavily into Struna, he couldn't afford to continue the channels. To supplement content for a bit, Tom commissioned a 3D avatar from the Struna team to make a new channel called Plan Dolan V that lasted between March 21st, 2022 to June 9th, 2022. This was rather not an attempt at starting fresh, but more so just to see how YouTube is in the modern landscape. This was what he could only focus on at the time, as if they're hedging his house. It took about seven to eight months to actually sell the house, meaning money was not in his hands. February 27, 2022, Tom released his pilot into YouTube and gave a talk about what went wrong with the production. Just as you think is the end, March 8, 2022, when regular Plan Dolan, Tom announces the return of Super Plan Dolan. And this leads us to today, with the channel returning, much to everyone's surprise. Unless you saw the video when he said he'd return course. Just like how I'm returning focus to my cats. Wow, look, whoa, look at them. Whoop. Oh, hey you. You're finally awake. Season 1 of Super Plan Dolan consisted of 104 episodes and had a proper finale August 27, 2022, with Season 2 starting December 9, 2022. You know, I'm used to Netflix seasons being about like 10 episodes, so this would be like a good 10 seasons already. Whew. 
Wow. A lot of restructuring occurred, the series reboot, as a lot of artists, animators, even narrators moved on from the project due to Tom's focus on the Shruna. People got fine work, you know. However, this fresh start might be for the best. One can see that Tom was spreading himself as well as the team too thin, running two separate animation channels. Of course, people favored the fact videos more, as around late 2020, Reddit stories aren't what they used to be. Much like a lot of the content that was popular back then, it doesn't necessarily go away. Rather, it changes form. Going back to Dolan's old top 10 list of spooky things, the modern day 2020's version of this can be seen in channels like Nexpo. The series disturbing things from around the internet being more tightly focused and well edited, but still serving the same spooky purpose. With any company restructuring, you can see what worked in the past when need to be changed in the future to have continued success. So with that, Plan Dolan Season 2 now is a story, with the core of it revolving around fact videos. Tom always wanted to do this, and now he has time to execute his vision. Darlink, mentioned way before in this video, is now the main co-host of Dolan, being the role others filled before her. Dolan would answer questions in a silly manner, only for Darling to answer them truthfully. With the season two re soft reboot, new se production, this would mark an animation change with Riggs being utilized in episode one for a lot of Darling scenes. I mean, being rigged ain't so bad, they're just cost-effective and efficient. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we used the studio. Um, Red Kurita. So the initial animator did the animatic and they did the first portion. And then the studio came in and did the rest of it. And that, that was actually quite a good experience. Uh, and I've never dealt with like character rigs before, aside from in 3D animation. But I, I'd say that I, I much prefer having the, the, the hand-drawn animation for sure. And I, I think a lot of people would, would say the same. It really depends on the format of video you're going for. Because we are so, we love the moments with exaggerated character expressions and that kind of thing. It's really cool to, uh, to see like certain moment that maybe I've written and they bring it to life in a, such an exaggerated way. Whereas with rigs, you are quite limited unless you just go in and just redraw that, that, that certain part. So, so yeah, I, like, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think at the moment I'm, I'm happy with uh, just going traditional. Also, I do like the design. It's reminiscent of old story time animators that would use white pigmented skin for some reason, while being more detailed and the mouths actually move. I hope they keep using them. The rigs would be murdered in the second episode in favor of traditional animation. Noting about what happened to Struna and hedging his house, talking to Tom about this and the money stuff behind the production, the channel is profitable. Well, in the sense they're a bit over breaking even, despite the numbers being nowhere near what they were before. However, looking at numbers specifically is a misnomer, as looking back at older videos with a more views, that can't just be the case that people just rewatch them. But that was back at the time where views mattered more than watch time. Watch time is more substantial nowadays, and gone are the days of people using clickbait thumbnails, for the most part. Also, this list of other reasons to consider about view stuff. Profitability is also a thing to understand with the rise and falls, as if a channel is profitable and the fan base is still there, it's not really failing? It just finally found its core consistent audience. With his goal being to make a really good show around the bunch of things at once, this finally gives him the chance to do so. Noting that running so many channels around the same time can not only cause burnout, but the passion seeping away with every new script to worry about. I was too focused on Destruna and I couldn't, I, I just couldn't split my focus in that way. So I don't ever really want to be that hands off ever again, because it's just, it doesn't feel good in my opinion. Uh, I think other people, they would, if they were that hands off, they would do uh, either side projects or they'd try new ventures, that kind of thing, which technically I did, but I don't feel as much passion and I don't feel as much of a connection with the channel and the content if I just don't have a hand in, like, I think the only thing I did were like the titles and thumbnails for like pretty much all the videos. But otherwise, some of the contents, like, I, I wasn't even sure it was coming through anymore, which is never good. That was when we were doing, like, so much content on the... It was the top 10 channel, and it turned into doing Reddit stories and stuff. So, yeah, once once I lost my passion for YouTube, like, it was compounded by the fact that you had all the, the adpocalypse stuff constantly happening. I was getting pretty fed up. Yeah, that really, like, pushed me to do Destruna. The pursuit of creating Destruna and having his own IP, I suppose there was already something he was working on for the past seven years. Super Planet Dolan. How is this a series, let alone an IP? Well, whoever I got for this video is asking, it's an educational yet comedic series revolving around a current cast of characters of callbacks to older episodes and classified episodes as seasons. No, I don't mean Peabody and Sherman, I mean Super Planet Dolan. Come on, we're not, we're not talking about them.
Silly. With how many episodes are out so far, it's reached over one fourth of the episodes of Family Guy and is still on the track to make more. Dolan commented on the first episode of season two, stating there'll be 25 episodes ending around 2024. He even mentioned that with his new animation team, they're aiming for a video every two or so weeks with a consistent core cast of characters and cameos. It is in tandem with the new format that'll be released between Superfly and Dolan that'll start to occur early next year. Noting that the second season is said to have a story, perhaps it's just a matter of perspective regarding what creating a series is. Though, will it be a success? as before? Well, that entirely depends on what it means. As noting it's profitable and the fans are going back to see new episodes, I suppose it's no matter definition, they're well on their way to new pastures. And after all this time, it was nice to get some closure regarding Shima. As mentioned in their addressing video, if they had put something out earlier, people probably wouldn't have asked many questions. Though at the same time, they were still waiting to see if she would turn... It was a lot to go through. Regardless, that puts an end to the Shima conspiracy, and best of luck to Tom and his team. I've been through such a journey of up and down, and I've learned so much from failing and succeeding and failing. It really teaches you a lot. And that's it's really important to just not fucking give up just because that stuff happens. You have to grow and learn from it. That's currently where I'm at. I'm at that stage of like always learning this stuff. And even even now, like, I mean, even with millions of subscribers, I'm still I still feel like I'm on the complete bottom that I'm learning from scratch and that I have to I have to be be able to, you know, get in that mindset and, and, and just focus on improving in every way possible. The future is bright for Plan Dolan, and while it may take some time to get the ball rolling again, like any rise and fall, there's always a chance to rise again. With interest in doing it to production, starting from scratch, Tom has a lot to work on, however, I believe in him, and wish him the best of luck to his channel. And thanks again to Semperd for sponsoring this video, and remember to use the code DAFPINA for 55% off your first month. Thank you for watching this video, and special thank you to Danger Dolan himself, Tom, for letting me interview him. Join my Patreon, follow me on Twitter, and listen to the Pizza Party Podcast. Until next time, keep drawing, and don't forget to have fantastic.